That's great. We always always have a backup. That's my recommendation. We always have a backup. All right, here we go. It begins in three, two, one. And death shall have no dominion. Dead men naked, they shall be one. With the man in the wind in the west moon. When their bones are picked clean and the clean bones gone, they shall have stars at elbow and feet. Though they go mad, they shall be sane. Though they sink through the sea, they shall rise again. Though lovers be lost, love shall not. And death shall have no dominion. This is Film Sad. <laughs> oh, sure. Hey everybody, welcome back to Film Sack. This is Film Sack, mining the very depths of film entertainment for all mankind. This is episode, just lost my tab, 434. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that isn't right. <laughs> Hold on. Why is this? Is say, we've, we've already been through 666. 434 is definitely oh, not right. Oh, I've got, you know, I'm now today Let's I'm... 666 and reset everything. Reset the clock. I have way too many tabs open. There we go. Episode you it. 668. You know what you should think is dead? Some Coke Zero. Yeah, there you go. 668 is what I meant to say. Uh, joining me today, I'm Scott Johnson. Joining me today is uh, Brian. He won't stop slamming that head against the wall, Dunaway. Bam, bam, oh, hi. I'm not bad. I'm Marco. Oh, hi. This week on Film Sack, we get shot right in the program. Oh, no, where am I? On the last day of the Rutger Hauer versus Pilot Humans War, becoming sentient robots who must mosey our way on through the rubble that was your old Disney 1996. Looking for a treasure hole of guns and hot Omega Doom robot on robot head rolling around on the ground action. Now beam, beam straight into our data ports like a burning sunset saving what's left of our humanity over on Amazon Prime. Don't do guns. Anywho, <laughs> welcome to our small post-apocalyptic theme park slash frontier town for us, not the human types. If you would like to join a gang, the choices are binary. In this corner, we have the every bot is different and emotionally fried droids who like to kill. And in the other corner, we have the every bot is the same and looks like Trinity from the Matrix ROMs who like to kill. And of course, you can choose to not join a gang and go independent. But soccer ball teacher head and bartender for robots who only drink water are already taken. Hey, we could really use a good barber around here. You could call it haircuts for robots. Patent pending. <laughs> Randy, <laughs> can you turn my head a little? I want to see the sunset on humanity. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. Well done. Also with us today, we have Randy. He knows they are all robots, but all the little robot limb sounds they make makes it... Sh- what, what did I write there? Let's try that again. He knows they are all robots by the little robot limb sounds they make. Jordan. Okay. Aloha, Scott. <laughs> Brian. Hello. Ready? <laughs> Once upon a time, there was war, and the war was bad, and there were robots, and one was called Final Disaster or something, and Final Disaster got punched in the software. So now we have a world where two kinds of fake people rip each other's heads off and then Beat the piss out of the heads while the heads say, ow, ow, ow. Brave new world. So, final disaster comes along and convinces two different kinds of fake people to fight. And then, that's it. Now, (laughs) you've got to get out there. I'm asking you to get out there and either be one of the ones who walks silently or one of the ones who makes gear noises. Like, with every step. Mm. So, you got to commit to this, all right? And you're going to be fine. As long as you follow three rules. Number one, wear a trench coat. This is law. (laughs) Trench coats are cool and stylish, and they've always been, and they always will be. So say we all. Number two, Mm. wear sunglasses. Now, you may wonder, why would a robot need to wear sunglasses? But I never said anything about needs. Robots just want to look cool, okay? Number three, at the end of the day, 
make sure you only charge yourself from 10% to 80% because that's what's best for getting the most charging cycles out of your battery. <laughs> where, where do all these people keep their batteries, you ask? The same place they keep their good sense, up their butts. <laughs> <laughs> wait was that rule three i lost track i think that was rule three <laughs> rule 34 yeah well yeah that's true too um all right nicely done also with us brian he likes water on ice ibit on oh that's such a trigger on mm. ice what mm. uh all right yeah i've done a lot of um macho songs over the past several episodes so now it's time for me to be uh, gosh dude yeah <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so That's much rough. for filling time. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know. For a movie where I had the least amount of notes and stuff to write about, uh, it's the first time I've done a song that was uh, three minutes and 46 seconds. And yes, I'm turning loop back. I'm turning loop back off right now. Yeah. <laughs> loop back. That was back. awesome. Uh, wow. It, the movie's hardly worthy of it but uh that's fine uh so we got like a <clears throat> we got this came from a listener right so i don't we have we know who to blame for this yeah, uh mess yeah. i know randy wants to blame me but i think I, just, I think i just looked at what the listener said and said all right yeah we should probably do that one. yeah i think we got a, just well, an email right on, on paper <laughs> on paper this is the point of film sack right yeah, like yeah. before watching this you're like Hits every possible checkbox that we could have for film sack. Mm -hmm. But then we watched it. Yeah, there's, you know, yeah. you got Rugger Hauer, you got a post apocalyptic future with robots taking over everything, you got you know, nuke stuff, and it seems. It's a remake of Yojimbo. Yeah, Yojimbo, exactly. Yeah. And I thought, well, yeah, of course this listener's right. Of course this is perfect for us. And in some ways, it is. This, this is a throwback to, I mean, honestly, we may be able to even say we found something worse than. Uh, Retrograde. retrograde i i don't yeah. know no, for no. sure retrograde worse you, you <laughs> no, just too much I, time has passed between retrograde and now for you I, to see it one of one of my four notes that i wrote for this uh, movie is ladies and gentlemen we have a new retrograde <laughs> mm, it's right no. up there but dunaway might be right we need it's too far away to remember for sure retrograde's pretty yeah. pretty bad but this is like labor on, yeah i yeah. mean it yeah this is this is uh so much better than retrograde on rotten tomatoes that it made me real that's that's the reason we watched this like if i had looked at rotten tomatoes last week and gone whoa this is retrograde range i i don't think we would have watched it but it's got it's at 27 percent mm -hmm. and wow. some of the yeah yeah that's, yeah. That makes no sense. One out of every four it. people enjoyed this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and that's about right because one out of four in this group enjoyed it because oh, this was wow. this okay. was this was for me. Wasn't yeah, you. but you didn't this enjoy it. You didn't me. like. You didn't like. Uh, okay, I, explain enjoyment. I, I need to know what happened there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so I enjoyed it because <laughs> it was it was just amazing. Come on, just give it up. <laughs> no, you? it was seriously, seriously, Yo Jimbo. Uh, I, I'll I'll revisit that storyline, the storyline of, uh, you know, Wanderer uh, going into town uh, two Yakuza's robots, droids battling it out, uh, low budget sci fi, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to make a movie and effects mm. that work with the technology you have at the time. Look, let me tell you something. It is low risk for us to shit on Omega Doom. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is some it is some yeah. risk taking. It is some risk taking. It is some serious risk taking to go out there with an idea like Omega Doom and put all this effort and all this money and gather people together and make a effing movie that's still a movie. How much talked about how much movie 28 years later how much by movie? a group on a podcast. How much money do you think? Was spent. I don't think it was a lot, but we can look. It wasn't a lot. No, every, it's, every, every movie. it's twenty-five plus years ago. But I feel yeah. like I could make something better using yeah. iMovie and my. Okay, so that's the, that's the thing. I challenge you, just like, just like. Okay, so this is always a challenge for movie makers, like uh, I, especially ones that are kind of floundering, like George Lucas when he was when he did THX, which was amazing, uh, you know, amazing small film. Uh, but he got challenged to make uh, instead of trying to do something else like stepping right into Star Wars, he was challenged to make something like American Graffiti. And so I, these kind of small movies that are basically retellings of movies that already exist and done on a you know a certain size and certain idea it, that takes a lot of nuts. Well, man, no, I do. There's lots mm -hmm. of great stories about small 
uh, efforts with very little money that are mind blowingly good and end up leading to huge careers. That's definitely a thing. Right. Um, well, how many movies do you think Albert Pion did? Well, I went and looked Huge and career. they, they all look like shit, by the way. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> all the way back from Gary Gygax's, uh, epiphany that he could make a better movie with Dungeons and Dragons after watching the sword and the sorcerer in Conan, which by the way, he said the sorcerer and sword and the sorcerer were better, was a better movie. And also this director's first movie. Mm. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I, hold on. The Gygax thing really <laughs> threw me. But, yeah. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of defending of Omega <laughs> Doom. I'm just hearing you. I'm, so I went in. I think I went. Okay. You, okay. So I blow backstory for those who are listening for the first time. I grew up on horror comics and reading uh, short sci-fi stories and magazines. This was my uh, art art language that I learned growing up as a small child, which translated into these small independent films that were making things that you weren't really seeing uh at the theater mm. and so i have a background that's probably more appreciative of something like this but i absolutely recognize that omega doom is not for most people yeah not I, even close yeah it's good it's, it's a it's, not even close i get it like you're home on a saturday this weird thing shows up on you know your first experience with free cable or or maybe some saturday afternoon matinee bullshit or whatever uh, me too. Like I would sit and watch this stuff when I was younger, for sure. Right. Um, would I recommend Omega Doom to maybe my worst enemy? Maybe my worst enemy. I would. <laughs> now that I think, about I would it. not recommend <clears throat> Omega Doom to anybody except for listeners of Film Sack who are looking uh, for you know what what's a weird film. You know, that's there you go. Mm -hmm. Let's watch some Omega Doom. Yeah. What's a weird film, and let's have a little bit of fun. I do think it's fair though to put it in the top three worst movies we've seen. Probably, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I guess I got to ask. Um, yeah, how do you define so worse? Worst, worse, worst, worst movies. Worse than I mean, super, I, I'm asking. Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm. Well, okay, so one movie that I loved was Return to Oz, and this movie reminds me a lot of Return to Oz. It's kind of like this dark, small. Uh, you know, everything's in <clears throat> actors in rubble. I don't think I've ever uh, seen know, that weird. Is that a, you've never seen that? No, I love it. I don't think I have. Is that a, supposed it. to be a direct sequel or what's the deal there with that? Yeah, it's a direct sequel. She's uh, she, yeah, she's, she's back in town, right? She's, she went back to, to Oz. It's called return to Oz. Uh, <laughs> but, <All right. laughs> but the thing is, I, you know, most people are, who watch this week are, are probably on the same page. All you guys are, you know, it's like, yeah, this was, this was a monumental waste of time. It's hard to look at. It's ugly. Uh, it's uneven. Um, there's a lot of hamming going on. Um, it's, yeah, it feels all your complaints are valid. Yeah. What's, yeah, it feels unfinished. You say it feels unfinished. I, like I would, they, I would yeah, actually, yeah. I, uh, I would say it feels unstarted. Like there's, there's all of this <laughs> stuff where it doesn't feel like someone said, "All right, action," and then and then said, "Okay, so we need to we need to move you over here, and we need to make this sound right, and we're going to change a uh, word in the script." So let's take a breath. Okay, all right, now we got that all set. Okay, action! Like it doesn't feel like someone was making a movie. I don't. I don't know. I I realize really? that like it's just too easy to just say, "Well, this is just bad," right? Like this is just like the room, but. It is. It's exactly no, the like room the room is actually bad. The room is a bad movie, in my opinion, is uh, because really the mechanics of the room are actually pretty good filmmaking. Um, is the oh. is the, just the, <laughs> is the acting is the acting and this the seems so slow and ill paced. I guess where, it, I guess it depends on what I, you mean by mechanics. So if you're talking about yeah, script like and the stuff, cinematography and yeah, the fact yeah. that they, they point like the right mechanics. end of the camera at the people who are doing the talking. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they know who to point the camera yes. at. <laughs> the mechanics of it are fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling mean, you, if you've ever seen if you've ever seen a real, I mean, we we've never really watched a bad movie on film stack. We've watched movies that fail monumentally in certain areas, but we've never seen a movie that was this absolutely. Oh, nonsensical. I, I feel like I just saw one yesterday that was. Bad. Yeah, I, and I and it's and, and I see where we're I see where we're kind of disconnected here. Like, um, you're you're kind of saying that if someone succeeds in crossing the finish line, then they have no. they have run the race, so to speak. They've no. they have they're an athlete. Absolutely they, not. They no. What do you, what do you, what do you not, mean? That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is 
that they were able to tell a story yeah. that was coherent and me and you and everybody on this podcast can talk about it in a logical manner I and can't. talk about is shortcomings. We could talk yeah, about it. Shortcomings. I wouldn't really say that that plot is, is coherent. I mean, I know, all right. Found, uh, uh, Omega doom finds a cache of guns. He goes into a town and says, Hey, I've got a cache. I found a cache of guns and he pits the two warring tribes of, Robots and me uh, uh, not mechs. What are they? It's the Neo Troy. They are robots, wrong. but they're just like, different models. Just, of... like, they just use '80s computer words. Right. <laughs> so right. The, the, they use they the put the cyber versus the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. it's, it's older models versus newer models. Essentially, right. way. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I really thought there were going to be ROMs versus RAMs because we were all taught right. those words in the '80s. Yeah. Uh, right. Sure. Lots of megabytes uh, and stuff. Pitting, sure. pitting the two of them against each other. <laughs> to what i mean just Go to Jimbo. wipe just to wipe them out like just to be yes. just to take those guys out okay yeah okay. he's All trying right. to so is he helping the humans because right. he's kind uh, of he's gotten his little he got shot right in the program shot right in the program <laughs> the, the baby. existence the existence of humans is kind of debatable in this right program, right which is well good. which is it a good kind thing. of i mean we see it in his memory right he's on horseback and the humans are behind him sending him into to i guess Right, but but in the contemporary part of the movie, the exist whether or not humans exist, mm. does it really matter? I see. Yeah, it it I'm matters. Not. It it matters if you're wanting to delve into the motivations for the uh, robot characters. Yeah, I mean, they may be wrong that, that they exist, but it matters to yeah. their motivation. It's sure. it's a real fear. It's yeah. a real fear that humans exist, and that's their motivation, movement, and the reason why. You know, well, there's a question whether robots should have fear. That's a that's a whole other issue, yeah. though. You know, like yeah. they they drink water and they have fear. Like, what kind of robots are these? <laughs> there are times there are times when these robots are very mechanical and very you know Terminator ish, which clearly was an inspiration for some of this. And there are times when they seem like they have emotions and pain and all that other stuff. Uh, or or maniacal laughter <laughs> or whatever it is. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, it it the movie really didn't pick a lane, and maybe that's fine. It's just eight lanes, and they just took well, all the lanes. I don't know, but well, I mean, I, you can. There is some coherence here, um, in in the way that that is told. So, uh, you know, the earlier models are more erratic and emotional, uh, and they become less human as they go along. Uh, as you look at the different, as the two groups, yeah. one of them is a hodgepodge of the old with di different varying task. And, and the ROMs are all very, you know, warlike because that was, that's what they were programmed. That was their initiative time. or their programming. Right. Sure. But are they like everything you're saying? I'm like, are they like, you know, these are robots. So if one group was significantly more aggressive than the other, for instance, this mm -hmm. wouldn't be a story. There wouldn't be anybody to tell about, right? Because they're robots. I just don't like the fact that they're freaking fake humans is so it's such a sludge over the entire story and that I can't, I can't. Why well, I'm, I'm can't. Okay. So what is, what, what part of that is sludging you up? What is it? You, you can't They're imagine robots, robots being humans. I guess okay, do you have some I, kind of I problem with robots? A, I, I live in a time when cyber trucks are falling apart. And so, yeah. like, everything I look at in like this, I'm like, well, how do they, nine, what, how are they powered? How do they recharge? What are they like? How is it like, what's that? What kind of large language model they're, are well, they based on? You know, like everything, they're, everything. They're everything cyborgs. Just, yeah, I don't. That's your, I don't. That's your that's your baggage bringing to the film. I don't. Yes, film absolutely, yeah. it is. Yes. I and if you can, and if you can separate the head of one of the robots and the head still moves, then why does shooting oh. him in the stomach or shooting him in the chest do anything? I right. I would love to. I would love to know how the head moves. I I I was thinking it has tiny little uh tiny little tank tracks that so like when it's laying on its cheek and it needs to like move these little tiny tra tank tracks come out of the <laughs> right. yeah little treads yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think I don't. We, we don't. I'm not, I am certainly don't want to diminish your enjoyment of the film. Right? Oh, not even I, close. Yeah, you, yeah. In, in, first of all, of this, yeah, can't. There's yeah, okay, nothing you yeah. can say about this movie. <laughs> this movie that I, I chose to hug this movie. I picked this this puppy up <laughs> and hugged it. It's not like you can suddenly tell me the puppy's bad. You know, it's just. Yeah, I mean, I, I get having some guilty pleasures and stuff. I have no problem with that, obviously. But I, I think that um, I think this one, because it's all filmed in the same, it's filmed in the same six hundred square feet. Basically, they don't really go anywhere. Yeah, it's yeah. all this same little warehouse thing. The stakes 
never felt clear to me. It's just like, right. well, okay, you're it's infighting with robots. This, I've never seen Yo Kim, uh, Yojimbo, it, it, though, that, by the and way. And that may be one of my problems, yeah. too. The baggage I brought into this film was understanding the story of Yojimbo and, you know, understanding and seeing other movies uh, by Albert Pion and also reading stories by the, the co-writer uh, Ed Naha. So, I mean, I brought in a lot of baggage as well. And I will not say this is a guilty pleasure. I've never seen this movie before. I just have an appreciation for uh, this type of filmmaking based in the time period it, it was made. And I can just, I just have an appreciation for the, the process. Of so what how do you it got made? So and, you just mean like, Hey, this is scrappy. We got a guy who yeah. doesn't make, not known for making movies. He's using a shoestring budget. He somehow got a relatively interesting name in Rutger Howard to be in this thing. I mean, is that what you mean by all this? Yeah. yeah that's, and that's Albert Pion's whole career is about, and his criticism, the, the critics that criticize him usually say, oh, well, it's obvious what you're doing. You just take up washed up actors uh, that used to have a name, throw them in your production and uh, and make a movie. And he goes, yeah. So yeah. you feel this way about you feel this <laughs> same. I assume you feel the same way about, say, uh, Uwe Boll and all his bullshit. All well, his no, movies. because see that, that once again. Everything that's painted in here, once again, I brought my baggage. Ed Naha, and who who wrote, wrote for like uh, Star Log magazine, and, and I, I used to read about all these old sci-fi. These guys are all speaking my artistic language that I grew up with. So the stories they're telling and retelling all fit in with the frame of the things that I had read. So it all, I put a lot of pieces together. Well, where we're, do you, we're like, we're almost like old friends. Where do you out together? Where do you stand with? Where do you stand with like Ed Wood or uh, uh, who's? I actually find Ed Wood fascinating, but it wasn't part of my language of growing up, so it's not like I have any connective tissue there. In the room, that doesn't make. There's no connective tissue for there either. So okay, I okay. I think I'm. 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 My effort to understand your your appreciation. Well, not just appreciation, <laughs> but your like your steadfast belief. Like you're really digging in on it. And it's fine yeah. that you are. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand why that level, like, like when we talked about, uh, what's something where we had big, well, like, um, Minority Report was Minority fa Report? famously, yeah. right. famously the <laughs> right. biggest disagreement on the show, probably, uh, right. until today. <laughs> uh, my, my, Minority Report's easy. I've, I've said it a million times before. Uh, it felt it was Steven Spielberg, tons of money, could do anything. Yeah. Didn't have to say, I'm going to, do weird sci-fi shit that because I've been influenced by some other directors and I want to stretch my, you know, my, my wings a little bit and head in a different direction, which is fine. I just never appreciated the movie. I didn't find it entertaining. Okay. I so didn't find it in a way. Okay. So, but, but you did find, you found this entertaining though, right? Like you actually yes. were like, yeah, I know who to root for. I, I'm, I'm into yeah. this plot point. I like this character development. Like those things, those things happened for you. Worked for me. Okay. But that worked for me. All yes. right. I, I don't but think, you know, I, I, but I appreciate the fact that it's not everybody's cup of tea. And I appreciate the fact that there's tons of shit to shit on this movie. And I think we should shit on it right now because there's a lot to shit on. <laughs> but see, but I did want to say, oh, we'll get to that. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of shit to shit. Yeah. But Randy, what are you going to say? You were about to say something. I don't know. I, <laughs> I it's, it's like so. There's this. There's this. The uh, this hobby horse I've had about movie criticism for my entire life, and that's this right. this thing about how at the extremes, at the when we get up into the 80s and 90s, uh, and also when we get down below the 10s and 20s, you it's really really hard to say you like a small part of a terrible thing or you want to criticize a small part of a great thing like everybody agrees this movie's so great mm. but there's this thing that maybe i as a individual just don't connect to and so like it, it, at the extremes it's very difficult and i've always i always want to make this case that like it's okay it's okay like i like the movie the postman I know there's things wrong with it. I think it's ridiculously underrated, but I'm not saying it's great mm. when I say all of that. I'm saying this there's something about it that connected to me, mm. you know? And like so when I look at it and it's 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm like, okay, I, that just doesn't make sense to me. That's interesting cuz that movie I'm with you on that movie and but I also 
I've never really thought about it, but I guess I also realize that I'm I'm in a minority, right? Like most people <laughs> don't like the postman. Yeah. Most people are like, Ugh, the postman was so long, it was so boring, it was so this and that. And I'm like, did we watch the same? You know, yeah, it's a it's just, an interesting. I just checked. It's it's actually fourteen percent. So, but like it's like lower than what we just watched Omega Doom. Yeah. And but so so like I'm like That's at crazy. the extremes, <laughs> ranking things and rating things breaks down because like. It, well, it really also looks, assumes the what, same people are rating them, right? And they're not. They're never the same. So whoever sure, whoever yeah. sat and watched Omega Doom, that that room, let's say it's twenty people, just as just to make the math easy, that's not the same twenty people that reviewed Postman or the and, same twenty the people review, that reviewed anything, really. You know, and the reviewers are right. different because uh, <clears throat> back in '96, when this reviews would have been the most relevant at the time, because we get retrospective reviews all the time, and they're and it's much different than reviews of the time uh we had mostly newspaper reviewers who would have been uh you know significant enough to have been put on rotten tomatoes eventually right mm -hmm. so rotten tomatoes kind of useless at some point uh when you go back far enough because who who's watched omega doom more recently and then posted something uh on rotten tomatoes i i like feel us. like that kind of averages out like like okay you know, for a bad movie a current reviewer is going to recognize its badness for a great movie a current reviewer is going to recognize its greatness like i, I kind of right. i mm. believe i want to believe again a uh, man movie criticism is so much about your your individual beliefs you know mm -hmm. well, <laughs> it's, sure. yeah. it's really not a science i, I just want no. well, no, over and, and over and you you know with movie reviews uh, on, on a personal level you there's no way to make them so completely uh, objective that you can't take away. Hey, I had a bad day today, or I saw three movies just like this and hated all three of them. So I'm kind of pre predetermined to hate this one as well. There's yeah. no way to take that personal great point thing out of it. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. And I think that I think that's this this is automatically making this movie more interesting to talk about on Film Sack. <laughs> yes, yeah. because oh, yeah. otherwise we're not we're there's not a lot of other stuff to focus on. We can't sit here and go. I don't know that I've ever <laughs> seen Rugger Hauer put in a better performance or <laughs> right. You know, yeah. those, right. those yeah. discussions aren't going to happen. Instead, the discussions around like, how does a thing like this even get made? Why was Rugger Hauer so prone to go from some of the most iconic roles of his career to do a bunch of sludge like this and then move on to something like Batman, uh, dark Knight or, you right. know, big, right. big profile stuff in his career. Like he is a weird one. He's a weird dude in terms of like his Hollywood trajectory. And it's super fascinating, but like, who did he know? Why did this, did he just not say no and to anything? The better, at the, time? the better question is why does he play such a compelling cyborg? Oh, no matter what he yeah. does, he, well, he just plays a compelling cyborg. I disagree. He, again, he is the, he is the bright spot of this film. It's yeah. not a super, it's not a blindingly well. bright spot. Right? <laughs> no, there you go. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, there you go. But, like he's, but, it, but his character is compelling because I think Rutger Hauer himself is compelling. Yeah. Like he right. can, his his line delivery always makes you feel like you're, you're seeing 10% of what the character wants to put out there and 90% of what the character's motivations and feelings are behind it. And maybe you sometimes just assume that, but I mean, you can't, you can't watch this thing and not think about Roy Batty and Blade Runner. Right. And, and, yeah. um, Hobo with a shotgun. And, yeah. Like well, I, that, I like yeah. watching this movie, yeah. I was just like, Ooh, I, I want to watch Hobo with a shotgun kind of as a chaser, kind of to clear out the bad. <laughs> but also, yeah. Also yeah. just because, you know, that's Rutger Howard doing good things, doing what he yeah. does. Yeah. We loved yeah. him. And we all just saw uh, a hitcher. He was great in the hitcher. One of the scariest oh, yeah, dudes ever. Hitcher. Yeah. Just yeah. incredibly this good. This is our seventh, our seventh Rutger yeah. Howard movie. Yeah. On yeah. Film oh, wow. And it made me, uh, it made me like try to scratch my head going, Okay, I remember Lady Hawk pretty well. Yeah, Lady Hawk. But I Hawk. don't remember Nighthawks at all. And I'm trying, and like that, well, I'm mm. sure we sacked that more recently. And I'm like, well, so what is I that? can't What's remember Nighthawks. I Night cannot Hawks. even tell you what Nighthawks is. I can't either. Is. I was just trying like, to think what Nighthawks kind of, was. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. What did we. <laughs> what is Night? Hold on. Nighthawks. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is a, is a, a dude who uh, takes, uh, who, a photographer. So Sylvester Stallone is a photographer. The more you talk, the less <laughs> I remember. What do you think? Oh, wait. No, wait. No, wait. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking I don't remember of, this I'm, at all. I'm thinking of uh, uh, the photographer movie. Hold on. Oh, oh Howard thought, plays uh, a guy who's sitting in a diner on a corner in a big painting. Oh, uh, you're that's talking about Travolta, right? Is that what we talked about? Oh, it's a, it is Travolta, right? 
Yeah, yeah. It, Travolta's a the photographer. Nighthawks, uh, Sylvester Stallone. He's Thomas actually a sound guy. A cop, but okay. Sound guy. Yeah, blow up is <laughs> yeah, what you're yeah. thinking about with uh, Nighthawks, yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone yeah. is a cop. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Rucker Hauer is um, a bad guy. <laughs> that's, imagine that that's all, imagine I, that. all i can conjure from my memory of that movie hmm. yeah. but uh but you know like we also saw rucker hauer in scorcher i don't remember that we saw uh nope. you know like we, we saw scorcher <laughs> i could, yeah. not, could yeah. not tell you what the hell scorcher we, is we, squ- yeah. we sacked that but then we recently sacked the hitcher and i remember that very now, very the hitcher, well i remember yeah. Yeah. because the Hitcher's movie awesome. insists that you pay attention to so much of what happens in that movie yeah um where and that's my biggest complaint about omega doom there's never a moment in omega doom where the movie is showing me something that i need to pay attention to Mm. i can just i can just stare at it and think about something else (laughs) yeah the only the only time i wanted to watch it is when somebody got shot and that terrible effect they used to to have a laser kill somebody (laughs) That was yeah. always fun to watch. And you know what's funny? The most accomplished actor in this movie outside of Rugger Hauer is the dude whose head is always off. He's in, yeah. oh, he's in like tons him. of stuff. Oh, Norbert, yeah. Norbert Weiser, the Norbert head. Weiser, yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's so hilarious. Yeah, to he's watch all right. I mean, the green screen effects on all his right. neck and all that shit. I mean, he's not. He's fine for what this is asking him to do. I love him in other things more. I don't think this is, this is him kind of slumming it. But it's still well, I, he's still really compelling and interesting. I like that. Yeah, actor. he's yeah. he's fun. It, and it's so fun to see, in my opinion, it was fun to see just different ways that they could frame the camera with, you know, his big face, like right in the camera. It's like, OK, we've, we've already buried him in sand one time. OK, that that was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, what can mm-hmm. we do next? Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Let's let's have him let's have him squeeze <laughs> like <laughs> somehow scoot up to uh, somebody else and say some shit. Yeah. When right, Marco right. dies, Pulling when he, Marco dies, he, <laughs> he's like pushing himself across <laughs> yeah. the ground. Yeah. Making his By the way, makeshift splint or his, uh, yeah, his uh, makeshift. Yeah. Uh, oh, race. his splints for his yeah. legs so he can walk. Yeah. Marco, the droid, that guy, uh, Jai JJ Zuri, wherever his name is, that guy, I wanted more of. Oh, I yeah. More of him. The, the I guy just, who just like looked at the camera menacingly really in the short yeah. time that With we that, got to enjoy him. Yeah. I yeah. thought he was going to be a bigger ass deal. haircut that yeah. I never even considered. Yes. I, I like, thought, uh, I thought he was going to be a bigger, <laughs> either a bigger mini boss or maybe even the ultra boss. I thought so too. Yeah. yeah. And he had the big, yeah. had the big giant, uh, ludicrous Glove. hands. Yes. Yeah. He had the big, uh, God. Oh, does ludicrous have big hands? <laughs> oh, he, he does. He does. The, you, ever uh, seen him, uh, you ever seen him do the ludicrous thing? The the video, the music video where he's got the big thing. Oh, apparently hands. not. Does he actually like that? Oh, is oh you got to see oh, it. Oh, I did you actually no, say no. his hands were ludicrous? <laughs> his hands were ludicrous because they were large. I just was thinking about it because I remember those crazy videos where ludicrous. Yeah, used to that's worth seeing, by the way. Hands. If you haven't seen the ludicrous yeah. hands thing, it's great. It's yeah, <laughs> so super great. stupid. I just realized we haven't let fake Fletcher have his way. And uh, the, oh. reason I, <laughs> the reason I want to let him have his way is because, boy, this is a real, this is a real mix. Okay. Yeah. You're going to hear at the beginning and go, okay, that's what we're used to, Scott. Where's What's the big deal? And then he calms down, and then he gets weird. He's just, it's, just, it's, it's out of control. AI is going to ruin us all. So anyway, it's perfect for this movie because, you know, it's all about robots and all that. So here you go, Fake Fletcher explaining Omega Doom. Omega Doom! After Earth is taken over by an army of robots, the small number of humans left are forced into hiding. In the nuclear winter, only droids walk the face of the Earth in fear of the rumored human resurgence and in search of a hidden cache of weapons. One robot, his evil circuits destroyed, (laughs) enters a small town where a robot civil war is taking place. Hot garbage <laughs> i love how it slows down yeah the real. slowing the down is so weird game. it's like whoever's watching this movie needs me to slow down and be very specific about what they watched and <laughs> yeah so it did maybe it, it's a true yeah. sign and it's getting smarter and, and not, not dumber not a, not a single mention in that intro about cynthia ireland kathy ireland's sister right is yeah. that her sister? oh i didn't know that i missed that yeah iron yeah she's iron the... face the rom okay. yeah right all right. One of the She's trinities. the middle, the middle of the uh, Neo trio that, uh, yeah. that Rutger yeah. Hauer. So there were multiples yeah. of her. Was that her playing herself or playing different characters? No, it was three different actresses. Okay. Believe, it, 
playing the, the I, trinity of trinities okay. yeah. i had to i had to look it up because at first i wasn't sure because they, they kept using a lot of green screen where they would have one like really close to the camera mm-hmm. uh and other two and i'm like oh are they using the same actress and just staggering it and i'm like mm-hmm. but i'm like no but if you put apparently if you put a trinity bowl cut looking yes. hair piece and glasses on three different women mm-hmm they all look exactly the same. They all look yeah, like I mean, sisters. So much yeah. of their face is covered up by the haircut and the glasses that, you know, they yeah. seeing the three women. I'd, I'd love to see what the three women look like separately <laughs> just to see without the how close they are. You know, if they really yeah. did a, a job during a auditioning process to say, oh, yeah, you know, we, these three actually look like they could be the same the same model of the of the robot this alone. actually wants me to yeah. give them more credit because that fooled me i, I didn't know <laughs> I, yeah. me. I really thought it was the same lady in three different roles and yeah. who knew that kathy ireland's sister was uh well i wouldn't know if she's an actor she do other stuff or is this it just not not very much okay all right yeah nothing wrong with that you didn't have to work. no you didn't have fine. to do anything yeah. for she, me she was she engaged peter apparently at some point in time i don't know that's all engaged to peter what do you mean? Yeah, there's she, a movie she, she was in called Peter. Engaging Peter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Engaging <laughs> Peter now. <laughs> is oh, it a verb or is it an adjective? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what Rucker Howard said halfway through the movie. Engaging Peter. Engaging Peter. <laughs> that's also the other thing. Some of these robots did robot-like things. Slow movements, noisy joints, all that. And then some of them were... Not, not so, so much. Like, Rugger Howard barely had any noises when he moved around. He had some, but it wasn't the same. Yeah. And he was just sort of like talking like a dude. I, may as well just been people. You know, I understand more, wanting to repaint yeah. this as a robot fight. And it's like, well, I love your Jimbo. So let me make it instead of a samurai Western, let's turn it into this robot Western. I get it. Why you would want to do such a thing. There's, but I'm not so sure th- it worked. There's some real thought going behind stuff behind here that is not genius or anything else. It's just thought behind doing it. And it's, it really is as simple as going, we need somebody to walk from here to here, but we need to remind people that these are robots. Yeah. And I mean, as stupid as it's, it's, it's like the sound, it's like a, you know, it's like a, a laugh track in a, in a, in a comedy show. It just works. We all hate it. We recognize it, but it does work. And so if you need a robot, special effect, you just you just make some noises and they walk across. Yeah. And it works. It is. It is the thing. And you the can more do. and the more um the more animated the actor was, I, I Right. It, it, the older I, they were, the older model they were, the more noises they made and the well, more. Well, and that's what I really liked was. about Jahi Zuri is that he he didn't just, you know, he really in his movements did the robot dance yeah. when he was yeah. basically moving yeah. around, moving his head around and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, oldest and uh, you angriest know, the, model. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yet the, uh, former, the, the bartender, <laughs> she was the saloon yeah. owner. It just was like, yeah, I get, I get shit on my face. Uh, and well, I'm and a robot. Previous, right, previously in a previous <laughs> life, her, her function was to be, uh, she was a caretaker. She took care of humans. Right, the nanny. So she yeah. had to be the most human like. Right. Yeah, and there was some yeah. thought. Okay. Right. Some, okay. some of right. that makes yeah, and I could also see. I've never seen your Jimbo, but it was it was obvious right away. I'm like, oh, bartender. That's probably literally based on for sure. Yeah, I was sure it was more like based on a western before I before I um they saw it was like. based on your Jimbo. Yeah, I mean, very yeah. much so. Like I this mean, could have just been yeah. a stranger walks into a saloon. There's two warring factions in this old western town. I mean, Yojimbo is basically them. that, right? I haven't seen it, but my yeah. understanding it's, is it's, you should it's watch essentially it. a it's western. On, it's on Max. Yeah. You, you can watch it. You have to. You have to read because it's you know. You, you have, have to read. Sure. <laughs> uh, read. Uh, read. I was told there would be no reading. Oh, it's I a, can't it's read. It's a really good movie. the The whole thing takes place in basically two sets. There's like a bar, and then on the outside of it, there's like a training ground. Mm-hmm. And, and like this I mean, that's, that's yeah, like this. Yeah. And like this is such a ripoff, but it's like, yeah, if you watch you Jimbo, you'll understand how bad Omega Tomb is because <laughs> it couldn't even find all of the, and I, I hate to say this, but it couldn't find all of the humanity and the characters right. that your Jimbo finds, but your Jimbo is about humans. Mm. And so like, like I say, this whole movie, I'm just like, what is, what is the motivation here? What are they, how do they work? Mm. <laughs> you know, right. like what's, uh, it just, I, I don't know. There's something. There's something terribly missing from this, and I realize it's it's probably just a good filmmaker. I mean, we've we've sacked this guy before. He made uh, Cyborg, 
And mm -hmm. uh, I was like looking back at that and I was trying to remember Cyborg. Wait, this guy, and, this director made Cyborg? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 He's known for, he's known for basically uh, pushing these uh, Cyborg subgenre, which was pretty big in my circles. Mm when i was growing up i didn't know i didn't know this is that same guy let's see here yeah he looks yeah. by the way you look at a photo of this guy and he looks like you know <laughs> is he, he the greatest he wants to be kurosawa mm -hmm. like he wants to mm -hmm. be that dude instead yeah he's timu kurosawa and uh <laughs> by far the best uh photo in imdb for us this week because he's wearing a shirt with multiple Wolf. wolves on it wolves. Yeah. yeah the three wolves yeah He's got two movies above sixty percent. He's got something called The Sword and the Sorcerer, which is not what you think it that's is. His, that's his first film, and that's the one that we was talking about right. earlier. That, then you got uh, then you yeah. got Nemesis in ninety two, which got seventy one percent from critics. I don't yeah. know what Nemesis is. Um, let's and see. And spun off a couple of uh, of of, of uh, you know another cyborg thing. Cyborgs in fashion uh, surround a Los Angeles police officer played by Oliver Gruner on a manhunt in the year twenty twenty. Ooh. See, these, these movies remind me of, I, I don't like to watch these movies exclusively, but I do like this part of my movie watching experience. And I, I consider these movies off Hollywood. You know, they're not, they're not going to follow all the Hollywood formulas, even though a lot of the things they're, they're using are taken from other Hollywood sources, but they're, they're like, Hey, it's okay. If we do this other thing. You know, if we, you know, if we don't stick to the Hollywood formula, it, it's okay. We're telling a, we're telling a story here. And it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Look, I'm, I'm kind of coming around to your point, which is, <laughs> I'm not going to say that you've convinced me this is good because it's not right. good. But it's, what it is is it, a, it's a different thing. It's a different kind of. I don't know the word. Maybe there's no. It's word It's like for comparing this. a McRib to a steak. Most of the time, we we eat steak when we watch movies, and it's really good. And it's formulaic, but every once in a while we go to yeah. McDonald's and get a McRib and it's fine. It's not steak and no one said it was steak. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> right. it's fine. Right. It's fine. And it's not, fine. I didn't, I didn't regret this. In fact, my, I was watching it going, well, we're going to have fun talking about this. I don't mm -hmm. know where it's going to yeah, go. Yeah. I didn't quite expect as much defense out of Dunaway as we've gotten. Um, but, I'm, but I'm less defending the movie Omega Doom and more offend, uh, defending the idea that we should not we should just we shouldn't just give all these movies shit just because uh, you know they're small independent films it's it's okay to well, let it no 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 you see and that's what i i gave you an off ramp and we get right back on the highway <laughs> okay all right okay well, what 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 am i not, not understanding uh, about your argument giving, randy we're not giving small independent underfunded uh passion projects shit because some of them are good. Yeah. We're giving this one shit because it's shit. Mm. That, it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just like, that is not the defense you want to make here. What you want, the defense you want to make is that for a lot of people, it's a zero. And for you, it's like a 10. And so that, like, what is that 10%? That's the defense. All right. I don't Thank think, you. I don't think he, I don't think you're saying this movie's. I, I'm. That's what I'm saying is I'm coming around to your meaning. I don't think you're saying this is a ten. There's no way this is a ten. Of course, it's not a ten. Um, it's not even a five. It's not even a five. But oh, it's. I, I was on a hundred scale. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a lot on a ten scale for a lot of people, this is a one. For you, it's a three. What's the difference? Well, like, the good the good news is a hundred and ten <laughs> scale really well. So five or fifty, you could say fifty. Uh, I. But point point is, I think I'm I'm coming around to where your head is, which is there's. There's something about this kind of cheese when earnestly, it, it, clearly these people earnestly made a movie. This guy, this director will say him. I'm not going to put it and lump everybody into it. But he wanted to make a movie and he had an idea and he wanted to make it exactly the way he wanted to make it. And he did do that. And there's something in that energy that's, if the word isn't compelling, I don't know what the other word, I, there's another word for this and I can't think of the right word, but I think I get what you mean. And you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's where your head's at. It's like me and oh, certain, you know, I, I don't know, certain songs. Like, I don't like, here. here's a good example. I don't like Cotton Eye Joe. I think it's annoying as hell. But when it's on, I'm listening and I'm going to probably dance to it a little bit. You know? Right. I have a, mm -hmm. I have a passion for, and, in, in you know, if, if I come across a little strong, sorry, Randy. <laughs> I have a passion for uh, small filmmakers that end up making a huge change 
in how films are made intentionally or unintentionally because they're allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, but and did they? I, think I guess what we're importantly. missing is what change did he? Yeah, uh, this is like that's the part I. I that's heard of this guy. Well, I, would would we have that I just that I just linked to you in our? Discord. I mean, we already had Terminator. How many? How many? How, okay, so let's take a look at <laughs> Trinity yeah. from The Matrix. Sure. Is this a direct influence? I don't know, but it looks like some of these things bled through to other. Modern movies. Oh well, that part I'm we'd have saying, to. We'd I'm have not to saying know. It's an absolute fact. Right, right, I am right. Saying right, but we'd have to hear that. The Wachowskis hat would have to say, right. "Oh yeah, just so you know, we got inspiration from uh, from Omega Doom." <laughs> I for... just saw this movie for the first time yesterday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if there's uh, if if there's influences to other people. I do know that this is a cult classic. Is defined meaning that other movie makers have seen this and may have taken inspiration from this that may have not found its way from other Hollywood films. It may inspired other independent filmmakers. I don't know. I'm saying that's where my passion is. And if I'm coming across too strongly with that, I apologize. Well, none of this is serious. None of this is serious. Right. Just so you know, we're all, I mean, we're just, we're just just talking. Oh, I know. But the, but, but to your point though, um, I feel like you can say that about anything, though, right? Like, right. filmmakers have taken inspiration from, I don't know, uh, uh, Troll well, 2. I don't think or... anybody shits on something if they go, oh, you know, like uh, the, the old Gladiator movies. That's a huge inspiration. Those are good movies. It, it makes sense. Everybody agrees. Good movie, good movie, good inspiration. Perfect. But then you have a bunch of slasher films, and you're like, oh, slasher films. What did this really bring us? Well, there were some filmmakers who were able to get into the business because it was low budget to get in with. And then they showed some real promise with how they shot films and changed a lot of things along the way. Yeah. So Peter, Peter Jackson's a, really a great, great example. Point. Peter Jackson was in horror schlock before we all think of him as the yes. great director of Lord of the Rings and, you know, beyond. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good example, but we have, but, but, but we have a trail, we have a map. We see it. Yeah. We see where his inspirations yeah. were. We see where he started, which was really low yeah. budget. And we see where he grew it from there. I'm just saying we don't have that. Map that didn't here. happen here. We don't. Absolutely well, not. we just don't know if it did or didn't because yeah. we don't have it any. Yeah. Nobody's going. You know, you don't have. I'm trying to think of a good director, but you don't have somebody like um, Ty West, a, a very popular uh, director of horror movies right now. Um, right. You never hear him go. Well, if it wasn't for Omega Dune, and if he had, yeah, yeah, then we would go. Oh well, no. There, there's the connective tissue. I'm just saying. We're if we don't have anyone saying it, we're just we just kind of have to make that up. We don't know. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not sure, I'm not sure that if Omega, the argument does not hold up as far as where my heart is, but yeah, if I'm just saying I, I defend this kind of crap because of that. Yeah. Cause I've, I've had too many people tell me that, you know, why you watch that crap? And it's like, well, maybe this kind of like, why do you watch high school or college football? Because one well, of these people may be really good. We're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was not, he never made it outside the minors, but yeah, I like to watch <laughs> the football minors, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah, all my sports yeah. terms in there. No, you may, I, I, it, you got, this yeah. is an interesting, this is an interesting part of your cinematic life. And I, I think it's fascinating because, because it just feels at first very discordant. It's easy to just throw it away, but I'm, I like right. exploring it. I think it's interesting. Um, I would say, uh, you go, Oh, let's see this co-star Anna Katrina, Ka- Katarina. Yeah, she, she was the she nanny, a lot of times. bartender. Nanny. She was mm-hmm. also in Batman begins along with, uh, Rugger oh, Howard. Wow. Yeah. Those two hanging out They're, they I wonder if they got together and went, so yeah, this Batman gig's pretty good, right? Yeah, what do you, how do you feel since Omega <laughs> Dune? You've been doing all right since Omega Dune. I keep saying Dune, yeah. by the way. I don't know why I keep doing that. Omega Dune. Omega Dune. Now that's can a movie. You even guess the third movie that we sacked that she was in? Uh, not even close. I'm, I see free. it. I see it. I'm not going to guess it because I just went to her profile and was like, oh wow, okay. Tell us who was it. She, she, she was in the game, which is my big, wildly underrated love affair, yeah. and uh. It just like she, I, I was like, what? She was in the game. Mm. <laughs> I've watched this movie so many times, and I went and looked, and I, I was like, oh, I see. She was not a big part of it. This she is the bartender lady, horrible. right? Do yeah. I have the right yeah. name? Okay, yeah. let's see the game. Oh, she's in all sorts of stuff. Star Trek, Vulcan Council member, uh, Batman Returns, 
Uh, she's busy now. She was in Boardwalk Empire for six episodes. She's doing. Oh. She's doing all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She survived. Yeah, some of these people survived Omega Doom. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Right. I mean, Rugger Howard died, of course, but he. I really liked him in his older roles, like we, uh, yeah, specifically Batman. I didn't actually think of much more. Were there other things that I missed that were like, oh, I got to go back and see that? Does anyone know? Like, would he have? Do you think he would have shown up in Blade Runner twenty forty nine had he been alive that year? Maybe. Oh, just um, like another so. model, you know. Not, I don't mean the actual. Yeah, that the right, baddie yeah. that Couldn't died. Be in the Roy baddie anymore. It would have to be a, a later. Yeah, hmm. that would be cool. That would have yeah. been cool. Yeah, would have been cool. They did yeah. it. They did it with uh, what's her name. They could do it with him. And she's still Sean, alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Sean she Young. actually did the body stuff, though. I right, th- right. They did AI for her face, but she did the the mocap work, right? Yeah, Is right. The, the, yeah, or if it, I don't know if it was AI, it's, but it was it's whatever the effects were they used for her. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Where's the? They had another note here. Oh, in the uh, in the trivia. Let's see. Where is it here? Uh, oh, Rutger Hauer almost lost the role to Christopher Lambert, which is just about perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right? You could see Christopher <laughs> Lambert, Lambert, however you say it. You could see him doing this. Hundred percent. I totally did. I actually would. Yeah. I actually would have hated that. I love Christopher Lambert, but I think it would have been that. I don't know. It would have been too much of this. I've seen him in too much of all these other movies that he would have been he would have been too good of a fit. He is very this much this this thing, yeah. isn't he? This is Which would deal. have made it yeah. just kind of like it would have just disappeared into mm-hmm. the mountain of stuff he's been in this like this. <laughs> does does yeah. have a similar trajectory though. Both these guys have interesting roles they're yeah. in and then they are in a bunch of trash. It's just like what what ha- what maybe it was a time thing because I kind of share the same timeline too. Their their high points and low points are roughly the same decades and what is that? Like, why do you go from Highlander to, well, you could say, why do you go from Highlander to Highlander <laughs> 2? But <laughs> how did that even that's happen? That's a good example, though. I, I mean, yeah. 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 But also, like, how do you do, oh, well, you know what? Maybe Christopher Lambert's a bad example because he's not really in anything else that is good, really. I mean, Mortal Kombat's fun, but Mm-hmm. two is atrocious hardly, hardly a good movie yeah yeah not the kind of movie you'd put in your top 10 you might have some love for it for 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 hauer for rut rutger hauer i always rutger. want to <laughs> i always want to believe there's a cultural shift problem like he's he you know he grows up dutch and mm-hmm, right. english is probably second language mm-hmm. and so like maybe he's living in the united states you know in his during his career and he's just like he doesn't have the ability from an early age to like connect mm. with with a, a lot of people you know mm. so he's just like taking what he can get not not really doesn't really like he culturally comes from a different place but christopher lambert's I mean, he's just a um, you know regular american so it doesn't really um fit this oh is lambert from i thought he was uh i thought he was from some he has a weird accent he's not from here is he or is he just a maybe he's a naturalized no, he was, maybe he's just weird I said not Dutch, born, but born something in, in the state of New York. Really? Oh. What's wrong with his voice then? He's got Dutch parents. You, what's, what's wrong, wrong with, with his that? voice? Because he's <laughs> for real. I mean, Dutch parents, right? Uh, hold on, that can't Are be they, right. I, I, I don't know. I oh, no, it's... it says here. All right, born in Great Neck, Long Island. He was only two years old when he moved to Switzerland. That's that's why he sounds like he's Swiss. Right there, we go. Okay, he went to boarding schools in Geneva, and he's. That's why his accent. It's also a weird mixed accent. It's like, yeah. Funk, well, and then he also funky. eventually moved to Paris too. So he he got some Swiss in him, and then he got some uh, French in him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. You get it injected um, as soon as you go over the border. That's how it works over there. Now, yes. right. the the co writer for this this uh, this screenplay is Ed Naha, and he used to do uh, a lot of writing for like uh i think he used to do some stuff on star log i've seen his name in there lots of times but anyway he didn't he did novelizations as well and a couple that i that i've i've heard are very interesting are the robocop ones so the novelizations are where you have a movie generally upcoming movie and they have a screenplay and then you'll have a writer who will novelize it and you'll have uh you'll see it at the bookstore it'll have a cover Mm -hmm. that, that looks like the movie uh, yeah, and then you read it and realize, yeah. oh, these guys 
weren't the same people because there's some weird shit happening here. We did <laughs> Ghostbusters 2, Robocop, Robocop 2. That's right. They Jeez. call them back. Jeez. All the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movies. Right. Really? Right. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so surprised by that, but I am. did anybody read the uh, that that novel? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I got to see somebody reading a RoboCop novel. I don't know why. I can I right, see myself right. reading that, but honey, the I novelization the of the film. I mean, there's some yeah. really. Oh, is that what it's actual novelization of the film and not like a so somebody didn't write it and then they based the movie on it, right? That's not one of those. No, things. no, no. Novelizations typically are they they have the same right like kind of like a same plot framework. Yeah. They just, they, they just pad it out. Video. It's like the star Wars yeah, ones I yeah. read back in the day. And it's like that, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, yes. I'm telling you a movie killer. novelization is the beginning of my affection for movies. I yeah, was, okay. tra I was trapped at a boy scout camp in the summer of 1989 <laughs> and the only book i had was the novelization for batman you know the oh the, nice the tim burton uh, i wonder who wrote that one yeah uh, a guy named craig shaw gardner i read it over and wow. over and over because it was the only book i had wow and it was like did it have any prince music in it <laughs> no <laughs> just the lyrics and where no, and is it was the bat? <laughs> and it was surreal then going to see the movie because i was a kid and I had read that book so many times and like watching the movie, I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is not like, like this, this is not like the movie in my head. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The movie in my head was based on the book, which was based on the movie. So it was just like very surreal. Yeah. yeah that's just like weird. That. When you kind of get director's cut or deleted scenes by reading the novelization, like stuff, because yeah. like you're saying, sometimes they get this with the screenplay and they're like, all right, go write the book while we make the movie. Here's the screenplay. Yeah. And, uh, and so you get those two different paths, like you're saying that, uh, so that they can go down. Let me, let me ask you this have you ever thought of optioning the screenplay for randy is trapped at a scout camp for a movie because that, <laughs> that sounds yeah, awesome dry, yes. wet dry american summer yeah there is one nothing. time when i was trapped at scout camp <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing in your experience that will ever be like being 14 years old at a camp during the summer yeah there's just right. you'll never experience that again where you don't have the agency to go anywhere or do anything except what you're told to do mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. sure. it's, it's besides a, they already wrote it it was called sleepaway camp oh that's actually a, uh, it's a it, i mean I, I don't know why i just want to see this movie have but... you guys seen sleepaway camp <laughs> no no huh? i don't think no? so randy I'm ringing a bell but... I, I have it or will ferrell because then i'll see Jesus. it <laughs> we gotta watch sleepaway camp you know it's one of those things it's like yeah we gotta watch sleepaway camp I don't Jesus. know what it is about that name that's familiar, but I don't think I've seen it. Oh, that's gonna... because the people who have seen it know they have seen it and talk about it. They want to tell me. So, and they want to tell you. And got some people listening right now are like, oh, you guys gotta watch Super Wake Camp. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's like CrossFit. They just won't shut up about it. I yeah. Right, right. About it. yeah. Uh, let's it's see. It's on Peacock right now. Jesus. It's is on this going to be our Sleep Halloween Wake movie? Camp? Peacock. Eight, uh, 1983. Peacock. Let's see. Ooh, this has a knife and a shoe in the poster. That's oh, cool. dude. This is. Shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. This movie is. Yeah. It's something else. 1983. Cool. Sleepaway Camp. Oh, there's Halloween's sequels on the Peacock. There's a ton of sequels too. I didn't know that. I mean, if yeah, they don't oh, have yeah. our October thing completely nailed down, this might yeah. be good. Yeah, good put that in don't. there. We're, Get it in. We're now at a we're now at a list of nine movies to choose from, and Make it hopefully, ten. hopefully, four of them uh, <laughs> end up streaming. Stay stream, yeah. Oh, end up streaming. Oh gosh, so they're not even. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, yeah. Back to the back to the writing a little bit. Uh, the screenplay co-written by the director and uh, Ed. It was. Actually, I, this is one thing that I I always find fascinating too. I like to, if I can, find the original screenplay or script and you know see what the directors uh, had to end up cutting because when you write something down, it, it sounds right. Then you get actors involved, and it's like things change. And the original story was uh, supposed to be set in Paris at Euro Disney, which explains yeah. some things to me because I didn't understand when Rucker Howard's uh, character first got to that town i'm like what is this post-apocalyptic weird oh that was supposed map. to be actual euro disney like so well, yeah so the, it's, it's not real, supposed to be the real euro disney. By, right yeah i mean it was a it was an amusement park with sections okay uh, right, right almost like a west world is kind of the vibe i was getting yes. from it but uh, yes it was supposed to be like a west world kind of thing because part of it i believe the way the story was written i haven't verified this but if i understand it right omega doom was actually supposed to be a part of the park and it was supposed to be essentially the terminator 
So right. it was supposed to be Euro Disney Terminator, but then things went awry. It's like uh, uh, Abe Lincoln in The Simpsons, right. uh, Abe Lincoln robot going crazy <laughs> kind of thing. Oh man! Right. I would have loved if they had a, had the budget and the you know the whatever they needed to have really fulfilled that storyline. I thought would have been yeah a lot of fun yeah. instead of like random trash just laying around and yeah. sets and stuff. Yeah, because it just felt like they got they couldn't get either budgetarily reasons or, 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 you know, whatever, uh, what do you call that when you have to get a permit permits, they couldn't get the permits. permits when, from oh, like, when you get permission, you gotta go, you gotta go yeah. ask the guy for permission. Yeah. The, the permission, isn't there a permission <laughs> called permits? Something like that. Right. Yeah, that's uh, it. but yeah, like they're, they, I, I don't know how that worked, but it just, it, it always just felt like they were in somebody's, you know, borrowed space and it, know, right. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. kind of bummed me out because budget, I, it didn't feel definitely would have upped this thing a couple stars for me. I think, you know, uh, having the budget to really fully realize, I think what the director really wanted to do definitely would have improved things. Um, the, the special effects, the, the sets, et cetera, yeah. could have really right. improved. That yeah, could I mean, have, you didn't I enjoy agree. the pile of bodies at the beginning of the, of the <laughs> Oh, I enjoyed it, Brian. Yeah. And what happens to all the piles? So when he first gets into the one thing that really bothered me though, about this movie um, was what Why exactly was going on. With, right, right. What was going on with the time <laughs> where it were all those bodies when he was coming into Euro Disney uh, was, was, were those human bodies and how long had they been there? Were they not oh. decomposed? Were they supposed to be robots? They, they, the head kept switching bodies and stuff. And then like, after like the first five minutes, all those bodies disappeared. Mm. And I'm like, mm. did they do something with them? Because there was this bunch of people laying around. As a matter of fact, I saw a lot of them just wiggling around. They're like, oh, did you really? Oh yeah. People <laughs> were wiggling around all over the place. Mm. We're supposed to be dead. Yeah. There were there that whole intro sequence where he's fighting a person and then gets shot in the program. Yeah, um, it's shot, shot in the program pro every time you say <laughs> it because he even says laugh. it. Then I got yeah, shot in the right. program. Yeah, yeah. Shot in the program. And they the way they use we haven't clips, but the way they use megabytes as the standard uh, for <laughs> yeah, all right. computer. I don't things. give a megabyte. Yeah, I hate that stuff. Right. But I also I, I also love it because we didn't know anything then. And no. you know, we thought a hard drive would never get bigger than about 400 megabytes, and so everything seemed so huge. Gates told us that's true. Right. I was, what was I watching right. the other day? Was it was it something with you guys or something else? I was watching something where the budget was all wrong. What was it? Shit! Oh, I can't remember what I watched. I watched something where they kept saying, "Oh, I know what it was." We rewatched Aliens uh, with oh, the kids because nice. um, they'd never seen it, and we were you know we're they're going to go through them all and then watch Romulus, and so. We started watching it, and every time Burke would go, Paul Reiser's character, Burke, would say, we have to, you know, we, we can't just leave it. This is millions of dollars worth of equipment. And I went, millions? How, how Try billions? Possibly we're in the trillion mark on this right, stuff. Right, like, right. there's no way this entire terraformed planet and your entire <laughs> effort is just worth millions. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> right. Which is a, we paid fifty thousand dollars for the Salako. We are not leaving it here on the planet. <laughs> yeah. You're circling around an Austin Powers joke here. Oh, like, am I? Well, I miss well, you know, you one know, billion we dollars. Millions, yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was frozen, he came back. Yeah. One million dollars. And I get it, right? We're at a time where million you know, we haven't inflated to the point where an airplane will cost you a billion instead of the forty million for the F fourteens or whatever. And so stuff changes right. and movies can't you know, they can't control that, but Dr. Peppers are no longer a nickel. I know what you're talking about. Old man Johnson. I know. Right. Oh, do you remember those days? I never, I don't think I ever paid a nickel for <laughs> where, never, where do you that, live? That's, that's awesome. That was always my <laughs> joke about my grandparents. Cause my grandparents used to say that kind of stuff to me. I could go down to the five and dime and pick up a, which makes sense. So yeah. five and dime, right. Pick up a soda for, for a nickel. Yeah. All right. But we, right, pops. we've at least lived through a time where you could go to a dollar store and only pay a dollar for something. But now dollar stores yeah. have things for five bucks. Now we and sound seven as dumb bucks. as them saying nickels. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It came back around. <laughs> I don't we love that. We go to a dollar store. How much do the things cost there, Pa? Yeah. Dollar fifty. Get off my case. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Dollar general should be a, a five dollar uh, colonel. It's, they should change the dollar name. generally. Colonel. Yeah. <laughs> colonel. <laughs> <laughs> five dollar kernel i would shop there yeah. let's do it i mean we went to a shake shack yesterday i don't like to be the type that complains about things but food's fine not a single guy was shaking there not a single but the last guy. time i'd been to a shake shack 
There's right. no way it was 35 bucks for two of us. And for the tiny oh, bits of stuff, oh, we know. No, I've always, uh, for me, man, that's that's why I don't go to Shake Shack. It's like, this place is so damn expensive. <laughs> and not worth I it, right? That. The food's not that good. It's okay. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah, good. But it's, it's not, you know, I could get the same. I could get something I enjoy a little bit more at Freddy's for about half the price. Yeah. And, I'm, uh, I'm with yeah, you. Look, no matter what age you are, people, whether you're listening to us, making fun of us old people or old people who understand, it doesn't matter. I will always think, that anything more than a five dollar meal is too much. Right? Yeah, that's when I. That's grew just up, how it is. That was the deal. That's how it is for us. I'm with you. And also, yeah. you know, I kind of liked how I liked the price of things uh, before the pandemic <laughs> more than I like them now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like for me, old man means 2019 because you know yeah, prices yeah, yeah. weren't that bad yeah. then. But... Don't worry, it'll happen to you. Oh yeah, we'll all get that. <laughs> yeah, it'll get, you'll all have your version of that Gen Z yeah. or Alpha or yep. whatever they whatever you call yourself now. Um. Apparently, Gen. By the way, Gen Zs don't like the thumbs up emoji anymore mm. because uh, they think it's rude. Like if you're doing yeah. a thumbs up, it's more like a yeah, okay, thumbs up. Oh, here. gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, dismissive kind of thing. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. And I and it I is. had a and I had that reaction that I think I'm as the as an older generation is supposed to or traditionally we have, which is complete revulsion to the idea. As soon as I heard yeah. it, I wanted to. Go well, tough shit. Get used to having a thumbs up. You know, I just, I just did, I just did a thumbs up on the, uh, on the post. That's all I did. It's like there you go. Yeah, they gave it a thumbs up. Yeah, that's the funny thing is all social media is thumbs up anyway. But um, well, that's okay. Yeah. I keep, I keep extending my ellipses because people said Gen X uses ellipses. Okay, yeah, okay. You know what? Yeah, I do. yeah, we you know do. What? Take that. Oh. Pause, 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 pause. Yeah, and then I'm I realized, more. and then I, hate I realized the overuse of ellipses, <laughs> horrendous. Oh, then Stop you're with, you're with Gen Z then. But here's the, but yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. This whole generalization of of generations, uh, all that stuff is so stupid. Always has been, always will be. And yet, I understand the pull. I get it when I'm yeah. in the middle of it. I'm like, oh, what did I just do? I reacted viscerally to whether someone likes thumbs up or thumbs down. I don't even have a good source on whether this is even true. <laughs> right? Was so- it was it two people who consider themselves Gen Z said yes, we hate thumbs up, and now it's a story. Like I got, I got to, I got to keep remembering that you know we're personally, we're we're victims of this bullshit. We got to like not engage. Personally, yeah. I think it's some Russian over there laughing at us, uh, watching us get all riled up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this I, is yes, what yes, set yes, up. Yes. Yeah, I think there I kind rec- of is something to that. Mm-hmm. I right. recently found myself in a debate with a friend about the notion of contrarianism because mm-hmm. I've my whole life I've always been uh, I've always noticed when someone. Uh, just feels like they're acting in a contrarian manner. Yeah. Like I always like your, your gut reaction, like, Oh, you don't like a thing. Well then I'm going to do it Mm -hmm. like that. That always like that always gets my attention. Yeah. Every time it'll work. I mean, it's working. It's working. And I, and I regularly just in my mind, at least I don't like have a list, but I like regularly (laughs) sort people. (laughs) He totally has a list (laughs) into the category (laughs) contrarian. (laughs) Right. I'll just like, I get I get to know a person and I just like think of them oh that's just the most contrarian person I know they they reflexively disagree no I'm not they're not they're not really <laughs> right. you know what I mean yeah no you're and, actually, and, I've, actually I know this about Randy I've I've actually noticed that what, so that he's I not contrarian well, talking yeah. to a, talking to a friend of mine the other day and they're like you know that's it's time to stop that like your your con, your concern about people being contrarians. Uh, is no longer it doesn't work the way it used to because now everybody who has adhd is getting diagnosed and they're going to therapy Mm. and so like a lot of people if you just call them a contrarian you're going to be insulting them because they're adhd they're not necessarily uh like acting outside of their own uh you know control and perceptions and i was just like mind blown mm-hmm. right yeah. never occurred to me yeah. like that i, I wish i was I, a cyborg you, <laughs> you yeah. humans hard <laughs> this is you bringing it back to omega no Dame, isn't i'm it? disagreeing with randy it's, it's so much bullshit it's so hard to be a human yeah humans are hard let's go full robot i'm ready let's go sure i'm fine sure. convert me <laughs> actually how yeah, all you have to do is make those sounds that's all you have to do yeah. how long do you think you could do that in a public space before somebody would call you out <laughs> Um, call, minute, we'll call you out it's, I mean, instantly. Yeah, instantly? within a minute. Yeah, yeah. within a minute. My right. wife within would. A minute, my yeah. wife would do it within seconds. She'd be like, "Stop it!" Well, yeah, what are you doing? exactly. Like so. So you're just saying, like, you walk into a McDonald's and be like, "Yeah, where yeah. do I pick up and, my Big Mac order?" 
<laughs> you have to walk with your hands in the straight hands. Yeah, straight, like, thing. yeah low, low uh, points of articulation. Yeah. I, my hands, when I do that, my hands do the, the shape of the Lego minifigs. Oh, okay, uh, so you got like you're going to grip something. Girl, I got like, you. Oh. The perfect shape the to claw. hold a pole, yeah. basically. Didn't they used yeah. to call that the ninja grip or something like that? It's uh, the best version of this. Kung Fu grip. Kung best, grip. That's it. Yeah. best version yeah. of this is the disassociation episode of uh, Futurama where Fry uh, is in a robot prison. Oh, yeah. And it's horrible yeah. and he has to eat oil and all this. So he finally just yeah. caves and becomes what he thinks. He thinks yeah. he's a robot after that. It's a fantastic episode. Yeah. Like it should be studied it. for like psychology reasons because they really nail that. <laughs> That whole thing. It's so good. Uh, but he has that roommate that explodes if he gets nervous. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. We have anything else to say about this thing, or do we want to move on to clips? It's up to you guys. Oh, let's move on to clips. This, this movie let's has see. to have tons of fantastic clips. I wouldn't say tons. The, uh, I would say a few. That's what I would only say. thing I wrote down is, well, that we haven't covered yet. I actually did write down eight notes on this. Um, you can catch and throw laser beams uh, is, is yeah. my uh question mark yeah that I was wasn't, weird i wasn't sure could they throw them that fast and hard that they well were they were they a physical thing though that's the question i don't they i don't had, know they kind of even though yeah, they, they just physical. glowed mm -hmm. when they shot them like it came out of a gun it went and retker hauer yeah. caught it and just hucked it back in one smooth motion right. and uh but they never saw an actual projectile right you just yeah. saw yeah just glow i only note i had that's down that we glow, haven't yeah. talked about was there the scene of probing his memories by tweaking his nipple for about a half an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was a zit on his back. So it was his nipples? Okay. I don't, I could never wow. tell where the hell that hand was. It yeah, just, it was such yeah. a close up on, like, it's just a cuff link. Yeah. You wouldn't understand is what the movie maker is trying to tell us. You wouldn't understand. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very yeah. deep stuff and we're not, we're not ready for it. Let's give us another 20 years and we're going to appreciate it more. <laughs> I did like, I, I did like, uh, so we had the sunset. Yeah. It's, the poem and the sunset started it off. Uh, it was all kind of around that point. And Shannon Worry, the uh, the droid leader uh, who got shot, and he was like, "Would you like me turn, to end it?" And she's like, "Turn nah. me towards the sun or sunset." Yeah, yeah, that one? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That little Dreads. bit of last minute of humanity, I suppose. I don't know what they were trying to say, but it wasn't much. But they sure were trying to say it. Who's the <laughs> really loud? Is Earl White the guy that plays this main? Um, here, I'll put his. I'll put his photo in here so you guys can I see. I think it. Titus is the one with the with the face, the uh the metal face, I think. The metal it's, the mask, the Titus. metal mask. All right. So right. this guy I can't find him in the credits. He's I don't know oldest. who this is, but he's this, the oldest of the droids, this, right? This Earl guy White. on my oh. post art, who's who's he in the Oh, that's credits? that's our that's our favorite guy. That's Marco. Okay. Jahi Zuri. Jahi, Jahi yeah. Zuri. All right. Jahi. Somebody sent him earlier. Yeah. He he looks awesome. He does. Amazing. But the yeah. minute he started acting, yes. oh man. <laughs> And he was the one who's fully committed to the bit of the moving like yeah. a robot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he yeah. really went all in, but when he said words, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. No, don't talk. Don't let him talk. With the dog, dog, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he has got he has got some acting issues. Don't uh, there, there's there's a reason he's wow. his IMDb is a little uh, a little yeah. empty. For, yeah. yeah, sparse. Yeah, he looks great is, though. Uh, Give him that. Yeah. Is the snow globe? Is that the is that the ultimate? hanger on for for robots and stuff to humanity is that kind of like the most human thing we can do is appreciate a, a snow globe i don't I know so. yeah, just, it's the most human it's like their connection to humanity is basically the end of citizen kane yeah right yes. also if you hit something like that that object with the right light kind of looks cool you know just yeah. seeing the little yeah. flakes uh, move and it, stuff it definitely was a case like the only trope i actually noted was that this movie uh, tries and tries and tries to show you something and for you to impart some sort of symbolism on the thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, it doesn't ever work. And it reminded me of in American beauty when the, one of the characters takes a video of a little bag floating yeah. around on yeah. a wind current. Yeah. Yeah, sure and like, beautiful. because the, the most beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In American beauty, you're deconstructing that whole trope. Like mm -hmm. the filmmaker is, a character in the movie right yeah right. and the audience is a character in the movie trying to figure out whether or not they are moved by this thing that they're being shown mm -hmm. whereas in movies like this you get shown the thing you're the audience the filmmaker is the filmmaker right and it's just like no you're i'm sorry movie you're not um you're not giving me something that's actually symbolic you're just showing me a thing yeah, right. Right. We, would, we, would need her, we would have needed yeah. her to had pried that out of the cold, dead hands of the baby she was taking care of before she before we'd feel something right. It's like, oh, 
Oh Come yeah, on. that yeah. We uh, but it. also that would have felt. I don't know. This stuff's hard to do. I think they couldn't afford a dead baby. Come on. No, and who uh, can, who yeah. can really? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta go. You got a real the blackest of markets to get a dead baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy in this market in this web. economy dark forget it yeah, it's all dark, all dark web, web stuff. stuff for sure all right well uh, let's do some clips then i've got a number of them uh not a ton because i don't know the stuff is pretty flatly delivered but i will play what i've got and it starts with this clip uh not the best story to read to your kid at bedtime here you go once upon a time there were humans and robots and a great world war yeah, that's a weird way to start your little yeah. fairy tale. Yeah. Also, that yeah. narrator is the chick in the bucket for me because he showed up to narrate twice or three times and then disappeared entirely. Right. Uh, and you had Rugger Howard doing scripture reading or whatever he was doing. Right, his, his poem at the beginning. Yeah. Right. But this guy, Once upon a time. he just came in, sounded a little like Hannibal Lecter, and then left. And I don't know what the... <laughs> kind of did, yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, listen to that again. Once upon a time. That sounds like, what's his name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. I ate his liver with some fava beans yeah. and a nice Chianti. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea is. of... <laughs> Thanks for finishing. <laughs> <laughs> big That's finish, big finish. I like the way they... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like the, I like the idea of the last day of the war. That that's such a cool concept to me. And then it's like then then it's like destruction. It's like I don't know. Yeah, I like that me. too. I know what you're saying. It's it works well. It, it, historic stuff it or says even a lot. Yeah, there's some. It's not great in this movie, but it's it, no. I like it as a concept. Um, all right, here's the head guy. Hey, hey, wait a oh, 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 wait a minute! Stop! Aren't you the least bit curious about this place? He was struggling to make his accent fit. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. At first, I thought he was the guy who played the skinhead in Some Kind of Wonderful, the the, the guy you think is going to be an enemy, that in, but then becomes an ally to Eric uh, Stoll's character. Love that guy. Right. Yeah. I do, too. That's what I thought this was at first. But uh, he same was, vibe. Yeah, guy. same vibe. He, he, um, speaking of Halloween movies, that guy was in, let's see if I can find that real fast. He was in something I absolutely loved. Okay, his name was Elias Cotius. Things I say, yes, he's a skinhead. Yes, uh -huh. Amazing roles, generally speaking, is in all sorts of great stuff. But uh, the movie I'm thinking of is not showing up. Is it the no? The Killing was a show. Ah, damn it! He's in some vampire thing, and I thought he was great. There, I've done it. I've told okay, you what. There, I've, I've done the work. You uh, do. Your you work. do the rest of the work and find out what totally the hell I'm talking you. about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's great. That guy's still rocking, doing new stuff. Um, okay, here's some very quality robot acting. Now that really pisses me off. I'm fixing up my soccer ball like that. All right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so angry. Must robot away. I'm going to stomp off. <laughs> <laughs> the faster it goes, the quicker they're moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, water on ice and then uh, the sweet guitar riff. Here you go. I'll have a water. On ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you lived in this world, you'd really think that's hilarious. Yeah. That sound uh, the 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 music, if you want to call it that, weird in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mute, muted. Very smart too. I was listening for a lot of like some of it. You just don't get anything yeah. for a while. Yeah. And then the, the, even when they have something like that, it's super quiet compared to the dialogue. It's very weird. Yeah. Uh, here's truth, then a laugh. Even if you are telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just went on and on. <laughs> yeah, she's like, my sister is in Sports Illustrated. <laughs> uh, evil robot acting. Don't sound so pretty after I'm done with it. Oh my gosh, dude. Don't sound so pretty. <laughs> you need to kill him quick because he's bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, Something about the head. Listen up, pal. I'm going to kill the head. But first, I'm going to kill you. Wow. I thought I was going to say body. I really did. Oh. Why, I was locked uh, in. Mm. Why would a robot take a dramatic pause? I don't know. See, this is the problem. <laughs> the rules, Gen Z. The, yeah. rules, Gen the rules have not been established very well. I hate to say it. Nope. Right. True. Uh, he's got an interesting haircut i just noticed in the stuff i put in the discord there he's got this like shaved the uh, little panel up there on his forehead you guys see that yeah i love that that's why i was oh, thinking though yeah. i don't know 
I'm assuming they killed the robot barber who lived in town. Right. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. It blinded him, certainly. Yeah. And he too. just went, mm-hmm. I'm just going to flail my arms and hopefully I get hair. Yep. That's my scalp. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. It's a real choice. Isn't It'll it? grow back. Wait. No, it won't. No, it won't. I'm, I'm screwed. All right. Here's back like when Megan Megab- Barbie off a head. That's head right. Barbie? No, head that's head right. Barbie. The head Hair Barbie. Barbie. I get it. Uh, mm-hmm. Back when megabytes seemed like as large as we were going to get. She'll come after us. There'll be a war. We all lose a lot of megabytes and nobody gets the guns. Oh, also, he really trailed off at the end with the no, we're not going to get the guns. <laughs> yes. Some dumb dialogue. Uh, the guns made no sense to me either. Your super powered robots that could just beat the shit out of each other and fire, you know, red hot laser beam bad effect right. or whatever Ooh. why do you care about this cache of guns like it's not that big a deal. right yeah it's really weird seems like you do it just fine without the guns yeah tommy 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 where are my guns that's what i thought tommy. of too. <laughs> tommy yeah. guns i thought of that three or four times in this and like yeah i'm mm-hmm. kind of in the mood to watch <laughs> peaky blinders over again hmm totally uh here's iron face and our guy having a chat i'm gonna take you out one by one damn straight <laughs> <Iron Fist. laughs> That's great. I must That's admit, a jack. you are a hell of a piece of hardware. Yes. Damn straight. That is that has gone straight. by, by, by. We don't say that. Yeah. Does anybody say damn straight anymore? Nobody says damn straight anymore. No. I don't think. I love, I love how that sounded just the tiniest bit like Diablo 2. <laughs> that was that because of that guitar sound, that was my favorite part of the movie. Oh, the that, little, that little, 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 little. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know play, what? Play it again. Let's play it again. again. Spanish guitar for me, yeah. Let's play that again. Here we go. I'm going to take you out one by one. <laughs> yeah, it's like Zone 1 or whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Diablo <laughs> 2. Yeah. That's pretty great. All right. Uh, let's move on to our final clip, which is about a uh, thing a robot would never say in the far-flung future. Holy Toledo. A gun. A gun. Gun. Holy Toledo. Holy Toledo. All right. Well, that ends that. Thank goodness. Now it's time for the checklist. Whoops. Why didn't it play? There we go. This is the Film Sack Checklist. Barely comprehensible story. Check. The worst special Mm -hmm. effects on the planet. Check. Mm -hmm. The whole movie Mm -hmm. takes place in the same one block radius. Check. That's true. These are Mm -hmm. all things we've discussed previously. Uh, (laughs) Star Trek Connections. Um, I'm going to guess that I'm just going to make a guess that Rutger Hauer did something on Star Trek, and I don't know this for sure. Ah. Rutger Hauer has never been on Star Trek. <laughs> Thank you for the correction, Sorry, so. Rutger. Um, who, who, what the, else uh, have you got you mentioned, you mentioned earlier our only uh, connection, and that's Anna Katarina, the bartender. Uh, Anna Katarina was in an episode of The Next Generation, a first season episode called Haven. Oh, she's a and, Vulcan or uh, something, right? Vulcan? Um Romulus? So this is this is the one where they take Troy to a planet to meet her husband. She's been like arranged. Troy has been put into an arranged marriage. Yeah, I remember that. <gasps> it's early on. Yeah. yeah. Uh it's uh it's, not it's good. forgettable. And uh <laughs> and good. then she like you said, she, uh appears as a Vulcan council member in the JJ Abrams 2009 Star Trek. Uh, and I'm so tired of calling it the JJ Abrams 2009 yeah. Star Trek. You could have given it, it a name. Call it the lens flare. Start just call it the yeah. call it the 09 the original star trek. movie was the motion picture so just calling it star trek is fine yeah i just call it the 09 star, star trek you don't there have you to go. put his name in there i mean he's fine i don't have a problem with his name being in there but it's like the 20 <laughs> doom when they uh, made the new doom game in 2016 people don't know what to call it so if you say doom you're thinking oh what do you mean that 1992 game are you talking about it's like no they just say 2016 doom I kind of hate that they've done that to themselves. Like, why tie yourself to a year like that? But yeah. Whatever. yeah. Uh, all right. Let's move on to uh, these. Let's see. Where are we here? Oh, soundtrack. Great. T for terrible. It's really bad. Don't think it's good. Sorry. Sorry, whoever I, did the music. It's bad. Nope. <laughs> I I spent a lot of the movie trying to catch the soundtrack, the, the score, because there, there just wasn't a lot. I'm guessing it's never been made into any sort of album. You can't stream it. <laughs> maybe YouTube has it. This I don't a, know. This is a guy named Anthony Riporetti and uh, that has some credits, but like not nothing you would ever have seen. It's mostly working with this guy, I think, right? They work a lot maybe together. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's his, he's the Tim Burton to his uh, Boingo Boingo guy, <laughs> uh, Danny Elfman. 
Maybe. Uh, moving on to the alternate title. Oh, no, social media posts. Let's get to this. This is great because in 280 characters or less, you guys sum this thing up in a way that just common folk can understand. And we're going to start this week with Randy. I was drinking a lot of white wine yesterday. I just wanted to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> great. Prepared. Omega Doom. Do you have insomnia? I give you Omega Doom. Do you have a clear head? I give you Omega Doom. Do you ever wish to have a reference by which you can compare the discomfort to, of going to the dentist or the gynecologist or the DMV? Ask your doctor if Omega Doom is right for you. But if you ask me, it's wrong for you. I promise. Oh, Lord. Yeah. That's a promise I think <laughs> you can stand behind. I wrote. Yeah. I like it. Didn't even rhyme. <laughs> That's, I, yes, exactly. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Pros, I guess, right? Uh, right. Let's now move to another pro, Brian Dunaway. Omega Doom, trench coat wearing robots looking for love and guns in all the wrong places. Hashtag on ice. Yeah, <laughs> on ice. Well, they really, they really wanted me to take that serious when you said that, didn't yeah. they? He's like, I want it on ice. ice. On ice. Oh. oh, you're funny, Mr. Robot. And I'm like, ice water? Big deal, dude. Lame. Yeah. Robots all right. aren't supposed to like ice. Yeah, right? They're not supposed to like water at all, I don't think. No, anyway, I, uh, Brian Ibbett, it's your turn. Unbelievably, I wrote two. Uh, I can't believe I wrote two for this damn <laughs> you movie. You had extra time after wow. extra time because I rewatched intro it. Intro music. Uh, Omega Doom. I can't feel my face when I'm... Oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's good. Can, can we even talk about how the movie doesn't have an ending? It does it not? Yeah, I oh. think I, I mentioned that early on, but uh, I mean, not really. I guess me. you're right. It kind of does. So I, I, I actually like the idea of it kind of hanging, like the like the that final line of "There's another one of you up north who's even a bigger murderer." And I was like, right, oh, setting oh. it up for a sequel that we never got. Basically, there's three kinds of movies with, when it comes to film sack in my household. There's film sack movies where I gather my family and watch them together. Mm -hmm. There's film sack movies where I go and check into it. And then if I <laughs> think that my family might want to have also seen it, I, I start over with my family. Mm -hmm. And then there's this. And this is where I start watching it. I check into it. I'm like, oh, no. So no one, no one should be subjected to this. And then I, I watch the whole thing by myself, like on my computer or whatever. And then in the end, I go tell my family, "Woo, you dodged a bullet. Thanks to yeah, me. Yeah. 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 And that's, what I tell, is, that's what I tell everybody too. I'm like, nope, you went this, Yeah. This yeah. is the third one. And it, especially that feeling was really with me at the end of the movie, because at the end of the movie, Omega Doom, like he's achieved something. It's not really clear what the something is. But he's achieved something. And then he like bids farewell to the bartender in the head. And then he uh, wanders off. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's, that's it. The, that's your movie. I, it was. It's all she wrote. Um, it's all she wrote. Okay. Well, I mean, that's kind of how the source material works too, right? I mean. Is that how you Jimbo? Yeah. Kind of came in, changed some stuff. In his own yeah, yo, Jimbo, a it's very much like a lone warrior western. It's, it's you may as well just swap this out for western. And yeah, same I mean, with yo, Jimbo, like, it's the same thing. Yeah, if I wouldn't have been yeah. surprised then they had Bill Bixby walking off, you know, yeah, but, just <laughs> heading down the street. Sad music, sure. Sad music playing. Yeah, right. I just yo, Jimbo has a very satisfying ending, and it has it's a satisfying movie again because it's oh, about it's people. Better. <laughs> yeah. you know it's yeah. about people <laughs> it's, a, it's a good it's a real movie it's a real good movie yeah you know, jimbo hold uh from what i've heard again i haven't seen it holds yeah. up and is uh you I'll know a strong it. contender for one of kurosawa's best movies if not his best and, but i haven't seen and it was a is 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 you know good source material you mm -hmm. know but when you make a photocopy of something that's really good sometimes you get this yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> you get that weird blue thing you got in school the whatever that right. was called what was that thing it wasn't a copier but you could like uh, mimeograph mimeograph what a piece of yeah. shit thing it smells that was. amazing though yeah oh yeah is that ozone or something is that what it does or the, yeah something like later you and i yeah. share share a similar taste in like the smell of mm. some like when you should you yeah. put up a picture of that giant grasshopper on your gas thing yeah the gas hopper. very yeah. first thought in my head was i, I can smell that good. gas dude mm. love it <laughs> totally it's a good thing i'm not a huffer i would be seriously addicted. <laughs> <That'd> be dangerous <laughs> uh hey here's my second uh social media post. oh go ahead yeah. right yeah, oh, two. yeah, yeah. that's right uh, completely uh obliterated my momentum on this one uh omega doom replicant 
Uh, replicant. <laughs> replicant. Oh, I only like replic. <laughs> I only like replicants. All right. So I know. Yeah. Exactly. Take your replicant. Be a replicant. Be a replicant. Take, take your replicant ass out of here. Uh, all right. Let's move on <laughs> to uh, where are we now? That's that. Oh, I know what the alternate titles. Boy, howdy. These were just handed to me, and can't wait to get to them. Uh, this movie was almost called Omega Whom? <laughs> Omega. <laughs> Whom are you? Uh, or the Ultimate Terminator Matrix Orgy. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Uh, here's a text we got from our listeners, and uh, this came to us at 801-471-0462. He says, Film Sack 667, this is a non-named person, I don't have their name. In reference to the Aliens versus Star Trek or Star Wars question, Star Trek Strange New Worlds features an alien race that bears a lot of similarities to the Xenomorphs. So I got thinking about this. Uh, I think he's talking about the... Um, Oh shit! They were in the old one, the Gorn, the new version of the Gorn. Sure, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They don't sure. remind me that much of Xenomorphs. lizard people. Yeah, they more mm-hmm. they look more like bugs in the new one. So I don't know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, maybe that's like maybe that's fair, but I don't think they look like Xenomorphs. So I just wanted to publicly express my disagreement with. I guy. just wanted to yeah. tell you how you were a wrong person with. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like Star Trek. We I think we even all agreed that Star Trek would be better equipped to deal with this. Uh, they've also had experience with the Borg before, and the Borg is basically a mindless, nonstop killing machine. Uh, rep- what would we, what yeah. we call, uh, what we call Picard once he got assimilated by the Xenomorphs? What do you think is going to? Uh, low, oh. of, you low oh. cuter. No, I don't know. Low cuter. Low cuter. Low cuter. Low cuter. Yeah, I hate that. Xeno Q. Oh, I hate that so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got a phone call, same number, and this is about retrofuturism, uh, what we talked about oh, yeah. on Film Sack, and I'll just let it speak for itself. Hey guys, this is Jam in Birmingham. Uh, about the Fantastic Four forecast of the retrofuturism, this might not be what you're looking for, but it's Film Sack 305. The last seven minutes, you had a guy call in and describe exactly what was uh, being described with Kevin Feige uh earlier but anyway it may not be what you're looking for but just i'm going through the catalog for the fifth time again so having fun wow. see ya love y'all good lord five times love through you. the film sack catalog that's insane i don't even think of it as a catalog and this guy is just putting us to shame that's amazing right um yeah i went back and uh, i don't have it here to play because it's seven minutes but i went back and gave it a quick listen and he's right that we had somebody call in that was very detailed on what a retro futurism fantastic four might look like way back wow. 300 episodes ago so wow. I, mean, I remember i remember us talking about it and saying here's the right way to do fantastic four and talking about like a a 50s futuristic look at what the 50s thought the future was going to look like yeah but i don't know did we do it after we got the call from the person or um, before and this guy just it feels this like i just like it, it was it was like an outro call so it was probably probably none of us heard it except me and even then i don't remember it until i re-listened okay. so i bet we talked about it later and and and, and it didn't have this guy's call as context yeah yeah, yeah. wow yeah, Amazing. I remember you uh, very early talking about this, like, yeah, and saying this is what this is how you do a Fantastic Four movie when the MCU has already been established and where have these people been for the last twenty years? Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, and that was yeah. even before they had already done a lot of their big cross universe stuff. So, oh, it was before Fox got, yeah, or maybe it was right when Fox got pulled in. They said, "Ooh, now we can get a, a Fantastic Four movie." But, uh, yeah, oh, probably okay. close to that. That's a good point. It's probably close to around yeah. that time. Anyway, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, what I think it means is that we predict things really well here on the show, and everyone should bow down to our ability to. You should. That is one hundred percent true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't matter which one of us either. We all do it, and and you should all be embarrassed yep. about how bad you are at predicting the future. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, thank you for that call. That was awesome, and may Bir- Birmingham uh, not be so hot and sweaty and muggy for you uh, moving into the fall. Uh, let's now move on to uh, some patrons. I'd like to mention we got some brand new folks this week, Mike. Lo City, Mike Lo City, I think is how you say it. Uh, Robbins, and then my favorite of the week, all turtles are named Shelly. That's great. <laughs> I like that. Uh, these That's fine nice. folks join us over That's at great. patreon.com slash film sack, where they get bonus episodes from the hosts every month. They get pre-show content every week, no commercials or ads, and 
movie-related art prints in the mail. So much more. Go read about it yourselves at uh, patreon.com slash filmsack. I know Randy or uh, Brian just did our uh, most recent host special. Who is up That's next? Right. Uh, do we? Have... I believe I am. I'm not. I believe so. Let's look, look yeah. at the pinned post here. Dunaway. September. Where do we? We still have this pinned, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we have Ibit Dunaway. Yep. Dunaway's next. September Dunaway. Confirmed. Confirmed, everybody. Do you remember? Do you remember? I went further than I'd hoped. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Dunaway, you're going to uh, bring us all home and do something rad. I can't wait to hear about it. I can't wait. Yep, it's going to yeah. be good. Uh, so watch for that. And um, I don't know. I think today's discussion about what makes... Uh, certain genres ring for you would be a really great thing to oh, expand absolutely. on. I've, I've, I've been thinking about that, that, and I'm still reeling a little bit from the, uh, it's the toss between that and uh, some of the largest straight to video movies ever. There's a couple of them. There's one that I really want to do. And I don't know if I'll ever do on it. There's a Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, and it's, it's, really? it's about the future. Okay. And it's about her and uh, dinosaur people. Mm -hmm. wow wow okay and it's the i <laughs> think right. it's the second biggest budget for a straight to uh straight to video release i believe i think all the most animated film is supposed wow. to be really bad but oh okay i i mean i'd never even heard of that so this is going to be interesting yeah. it's called to theodore rex it was originally supposed to be a film uh for the theater and it looks just like not the mama you remember that show? Yeah, the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs. Yeah, dinosaurs TV yeah. show. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I used to love that show. And I'm assuming it's the same. I don't know why I loved dinosaurs. Jim, didn't Jim Henson do those? Yeah, and that might be I'm why, because Jim Henson was amazing, and or his work was yeah. always good. So it didn't matter how bad the thing was; it was always better because he. Worked I just on didn't it. know if we would be up for it here on Film Sack, and I sometimes try to look at things that I'm like, I don't think. Films yeah. like I think I'll just do it as an independent thing. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you certainly can. It gives you material. Uh, but mm -hmm. now that you've told us, now I'm now I have all kinds of. Questions. Oh yeah, totally has the dinosaur vibe. Wow, yeah, weird. I'd not never, the whoopee. Never heard of it. Uh, <laughs> not the whoopee. How do you go from color purple to that? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you take your stop through long and jack and flash path. and the oh, sister yeah. act. Yeah, I forgot. I Those the are answer, the answer is always money. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. money. Money. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. All right, um, that's it for this week. Our next movie. Oh, I don't have it written down. What is right, our next we're movie? We're gonna watch Dark Man. Oh shit! Yeah, we finally nice. get into Dark Man. All right. Talk about a, an eternal film sack promise. We're finally gonna fulfill. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Liam Neeson, uh, Liam every other week. Oh man. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, we've been on we've been on Amazon Prime a bunch lately, and for some reason, uh, all the Liam Neeson movies are on either at Prime or Max. Mm. So yeah. I'm in. Go. I'm so in on this. I can't. You're wait. going to get your face bandaged. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Man. Uh, watch for Dark Man. There's a certain week. set of gods. That's right. And there's a certain set of uh, uh, Don't Sam. Give all your material away. No Jesus. Kidding. I know. Yeah. Sorry. I was. I'm using that for my song. Sorry. Yeah. He's already <laughs> making his. He's already making his next song. Sorry, YouTube. You guys can't hear it. You got to go listen to the podcast. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. And for this episode of Filmsack, Filmsack.com is where you'll find everything for me, for Brian, for Brian, and for Randy. We do things our way. We'll see you next time. Whoops. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> so Whoops. Bad. I just hate that so much. Yeah. And then I guess I like it because we used it.